<laughs> your emotional guidance system. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to use that a lot. Just okay. So what? When I when you feel good, you're in alignment. When you feel bad, something's off, right? And so really just using your emotions as a guide. And so whenever you're feeling bad, then to kind of go back and to, to use that, okay, so what am I focusing on? Because every time you're feeling bad, you're focusing on what you don't want. Mm -hmm. And so to just shift it, what do I want? So just really tapping into how am I feeling? And then okay, if you're feeling bad, then what am I thinking? So one of the coaching questions that I use a lot with, with my clients and in my workshops is to fill in the blank is I'm feeling blank because I'm telling myself blank. So I'm feeling angry because I'm telling myself that no one has time for me. Or I'm feeling um, pissed off because I'm telling myself that that I've I've been betrayed or that I'm being abused or that I'm being used. Really, it's our no one has the power to hurt us. No one can hurt us. It's our thinking about the situation and our thinking about what happens that actually causes the negative emotion. And so. Once we do that, we tap into that emotional guidance system, okay, I'm feeling angry because I'm telling myself that nobody sees me, that I'm not important to my partner. Um, and then recognize how does that feel and going into your body. So what sensation is associated with that? Mm. And I'm, I'm a big fan of A Course in Miracles. And a line in there is that every act is either an act of love or a cry for love. Wow, I like and that. And so when you, yeah, and so when it's, and that's all it is. Like even the most horrible things you can imagine, like those people are, like hurting people hurt people. Mm -hmm. What's inside is going to come out. And so, so it's us too, those parts of us that are the hearts that need it the most. So it all goes back to just that, in, you know, the inner battle between our head and our heart, which will show up outside ourselves every single time. So we just really want to focus on, okay, what am I feeling right now? What's the sensation in my body? And without judgment, you don't need to approve of yourself. You just need to accept what it is. So just going in there, and tapping into whatever you, what are you feeling? What sensation, what physical sensation is in your body? And just give it some attention. It's a cry for love. It's a, and, and love, like to a child, is attention, right? Mm, yes. Parents know that, just attention, and they feel loved. And they'll, they'll manifest sickness in order to get that attention, mm -hmm. in order to feel loved. And we do the same thing. It's, it started it way back in childhood will manifest sickness as a cry for love. And we can address that cry. We can go there, we can go into our bodies, and we can just send love there and just sit with that part. Sit with the tension, sit with the pain, sit with, and the, the law of nature says that this too shall pass, everything passes. So then you just get curious, well, wow, okay, interesting. So not judgment, this is bad, I have to get rid of it. Because most people know what they resist persists. Yep. And so you're actually prolonging it then. Just, it's a cry for love. So give it love. Give it love. Get curious. Okay, why are you here? Is there a message for me? A lesson for me? And just, yeah, embrace all that is. Whatever you're feeling, it isn't good, it isn't bad, it just is. And it passes with attention and with love. So what parts of you are crying out for love? And then be that loving parent. Like I just, I always think about that, the mom with her baby. 
and how beautiful that is, the way that the baby is held, the way that the baby is fed, bathed. And do we do that with ourselves? With ourselves, we're just in autopilot. Like, number one, to live from your heart and from heart center, get out of autopilot. Get out of autopilot. We get up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we don't even look at ourselves in the mirror, we don't even acknowledge ourselves. Just rush through everything. We have a quick little shower, you know, maybe slap on some lotion. I'm like, everything, just, just feel your feet on the ground. Connect with your best friend who's looking at you in the mirror, longing for attention, crying for love. And even, you know, feeling your body parts as you're, as you're showering, as you're, you know, putting, think about the mom and her baby, putting lotion on and how she, like, does this little piggy on each little toe, right? Mm -hmm. And every little finger she'll, you know, play with. What if we did that? What if we treated ourselves that way? We forget that there's this little child whose needs maybe weren't all met in childhood and who's now looking in every relationship to get those same needs met that weren't met in childhood. And so it's our job now. We get to reparent ourselves. And in that, we heal all of those old wounds. So we don't, and it starts to, it shows up as patterns, right? Relationship patterns in all our, all our relationships with our kids, with our coworkers, with our spouses, um, all of these, this woundedness. And we speak from our wounds and we keep attracting the same patterns over and over and feel stuck. And all you need to do is go back and reparent yourself and, okay, I'm, I'm four. Would I say the same things I say to myself? Would I say that to a four-year-old? Like, what's wrong with you? What, you know, we say things like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this right? And here it is again. Would you say, why can't you do this right? What's wrong with you? No, you'd say, hey, you, it's okay. You forgive and you're, you're human. You got this and it's okay to make mistakes. We're here to make mistakes for God's sake. Forgive yourself for being human. But yeah, I just, I just watch all this, this self-abuse and self-loathing and that really is why the world is the way it is.